Hello class, this is lesson 10-2 in our textbook, and the title of it is How to Find Arc Measures. So as you can see here, I have a circle, and let's just talk about some more vocabulary terms to help us with this section. The first one is the central angle. It's an angle whose vertex is the center of the circle, and typically it's going to be less than 180 degrees. So let me draw this for you. Um, if the vertex is going to be right at the center, then these blue lines right here would form the central angle. And I'm going to label uh, all of the endpoints A, B, and C. So that's called our central angle. Um, and because of the central angle, I can find a minor arc, okay? And the minor arc is the points on the circle between A and B. So if I have my central angle, then the arc, which is on the circle, really it's adding up all those points, it's called the minor arc. So let's write that down, minor arc. And typically, we're going to use those two endpoints to give it a name and put a little arc above it. And that's how we're going to name the minor arc. <clears throat> the next part is called the major arc. And these are the points on the circle, not on the minor arc, A, B. So instead of being this purple region, it's going to be the rest of the arc around the circle, um, unless you have other points. But... The way that we're going to label this is by adding another point, we'll call that D, so this orange arc is the major arc, it's much bigger than the minor arc. And so for the major arc, to differentiate, we're going to do A, D, B for its name. So the major arc will typically have three points, uh, or yeah, three points in its name. The last thing that we're going to discuss is the semicircle, and it's an arc with the same endpoints as the diameter. So if I knew um, two points to make the diameter of a circle, let's just say it would be going halfway around, and that's the semicircle. Okay, awesome. <clears throat> Uh, the next thing that I wanted to go over was that the measure of a minor arc, the way that uh, we find how long it is, um, is actually going to be the same as the measure of the central angle. So it's going to be measured in degrees. And since the measure of an entire circle is 360 degrees, then I can find the major arc just by subtracting from 360 uh, the measure of the minor arc. Okay. So I have a little example down here. Um, if you're looking, my central angle, x, y, z, measures 60 degrees. So that means that the minor arc, the measure of that, is also 60 degrees, which, which is what I wrote. So if I want to find the um, major arc right here, x, p, z, the measure of that, I simply have 360 degrees, subtract the minor arc, and I find, oh, the rest of it is 300 degrees. So that's awesome. So let's move on. Our lesson's pretty short today. I have a postulate for you, and it's titled Postulate 23. So let me move this down. <clears throat> and this is the arc addition postulate. So when you just see that kind of name right there, you automatically know that it's going to be talking about adding some arcs. So the measure of an arc formed by two arcs is the sum of the measure of those two arcs. So if I have, for example, um, AB, and I also have BC, then really that's just telling me that the measure of, all the way from A to C, so the measure of a, B, C is equal to the measure of A, B plus the measure of B, C. 
pretty self-explanatory. <clears throat> now we're going to go over some fun facts that I have for you. Here's my three fun facts that I want to share. The measure of a semicircle is 180 degrees. We talked about it's only going halfway around because its endpoints on the circle are the same as a diameter. Two congruent circles have the same radius. Okay, And the way that we're going to write that two circles are congruent would be circle C is congruent to circle D. Again, they're named after uh, their center point. Okay. The last thing I wanted to write is that two congruent arcs have the same measure and are on the same circle or on congruent circles. So um, it's really important that <clears throat> you pay attention to that ending part. Okay, two congruent arcs have the same measure and are on the same circle or on congruent circles. So either one of those has to be true. So for on your own then, based on this information, I have three problems for you. And I want you to decide whether the green arcs are congruent or not. And then I want you to explain why they are or why they're not. So this first one, um, the two green arcs are A, B, and C, D. The second one, the two arcs are AB and CD as well. <laughs> and the third one, AB and CD. So look closely at the information that you're given. Go back and look at my fun facts and some other information in this lesson. And then you'll be able to answer these questions. So I will see you in class.